Hey everybody, welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson, and I am excited that you are here. You are here because you took the time to search multifamily. And I'm telling you right now, you're in the right place. Nobody, and I mean nobody does it like I do. I give it straight and dirty. It's unfiltered, it's raw, it's in your face, but it's the damn truth. That's what I do. Um, I don't sugarcoat things. I tell it in plain English, okay? I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a scientist. I'm just an average cat that likes, uh, that loves, loves and likes making money through apartments. I love that sexy cash flow, right? And if you're in the car right now and you're listening or wherever you're at, just tell, just say it, yell it to yourself right now. I love sexy cash flow. you damn right you do. And I do too. So, uh, thanks guys. Hey, we're on a journey right now. We're in, uh, the back end of the six pillars of uh, secrets of success and we are in profit pillar number five and this is the secret to getting your offers accepted right in other words getting the broker to say i think we should do this deal now i'm going to show you some uh, really cool tricks and tips and how i um, masterfully try to get my deals accepted now does it work all the time no but um, it works a lot and that's all it that matters and here's the trick right so for for you guys paying attention is you don't have to do a crap ton of volume to be like super wealthy in in multifamily investing and like all you need is one okay like one deal by the way one deal I did one deal that changed my life, okay? And so, you are, when, when I say you're on this journey, I mean, it doesn't take multiple, multiple, multiple deals, at least not the way I teach you, because I teach you how to get paid, how to make the bucks, how to leverage yourself and get the right cost of capital so you're not giving all your profit away. I'm teaching you how to make sexy cash flow. And so you can have that sunsets and palm trees life, right? Where you do what you want, you play by your rules, and you go travel. Uh, you know, I'm getting ready to go traveling again. I just went to Yellowstone. Um, and I went dog sledding. I went, um, I uh, snowmobiled all the way to Old Faithful. It was awesome. We saw some Tatanka or Buffalo or whatever you want to call them, right? They're really cool. And, um, and then next week, uh, I'm actually going to do a podcast. I'm going to finish up this Pillars in um cozumel i'm gonna be in cozumel with my son and we are going to uh, he's 13 years old and i'm taking him uh, it's gonna be a, a father-son trip and um unfortunately leaving the girls behind but we are gonna go get uh, he's gonna get scuba certified i'm already scuba certified and so he's gonna get scuba certified and it's his uh, spring break and so you know and that's what it's about guys like Living this lifestyle is about spending time with the ones that you care about, right? And um, so often, most people get, um, well, they, they get off track and they, they lose focus or they're, they get into the hustle and grind and, um, of everyday busyness. And in, in real estate, it's really easy to get stuck in one thing. Uh, most of my friends you know, are fix and flippers and wholesalers. And um, I really think that they want to be, as Robert Kiyosaki would say, is in the I, the true investor. And I believe you can do that through multifamily. I know I have, and I know you can too. So um, before we get started, but by the way, this is episode 65. Um, I can't believe I've been doing this for almost over a year and a half. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I would like to just really quick go to... And give some love to some people that took the time to go to iTunes. And so this is for Stacy Hill. She said, I want to thank you very much to you and all, uh, to you all for providing such great content. Corey is the only podcaster who dives down and goes over the very basic fundamentals of underwriting properties. Life is all about getting your fundamentals right, then building and growing from there. I've researched and listened to hundreds of hours 
of as many podcasts that I can find, and I can say there are no other podcasters who break it down like Corey. Thanks for sharing all your experience. Stacy. man, thank you for taking the time. Honestly, um, it really, I mean, I read these things, and I, and I get jazz, man. I, it really is like, man, that's that's nice. That's very nice and very thoughtful. Because I know it's not easy to go to iTunes and, and leave any review. But you know what? I, I love them. And so I got one more from Brucia. Brucia01. He, he starts off by saying, I don't write reviews. <laughs> he goes, this is the only podcast that talks about, about multifamily investing that doesn't put me to sleep. Thank you, my man. Well, brother, thank you, man. Thank you for that comment. That makes me feel good. Um, you know, I try to, I, I love doing this, by the way. I Hopefully you guys can hear it in my voice. I honestly love teaching this thing about multifamily and the experiences that I've had and that I've enjoyed from it because it truly has changed my life. And if it can change mine, then I know it can change yours. And you know, isn't that what we're always trying to, to achieve is is to have something even better. And, you know, most of most people that listen to my podcast are already successful and you know um or or they want to be successful like i wanted to be really successful and i didn't find real estate till i was like 32 years old so uh, no matter what age you are right um there's a place for you in this real estate world and I, my only regret is that i wish i would have started on multifamily so much sooner i, I just would have been so much ahead of the game uh, if I would have, if I would have took the time. Okay. So, all right, that's my rant. Um, again, thank you for taking the time. Um, if you're new to this podcast, um, quickly, you can go to kahuna wealth builders.com and sign up for my quick start workshop. Okay. Um, it's, it's a free, some free downloads for uh, how to raise money, um, how to find deals. Um, and it's a really good, some really good follow up stuff. I think you'll really enjoy it. Like it. So, Take the time to go check that out. And with that, let's jump into this episode of The Profit Pillars, The Secrets to Getting Your Offers Accepted, okay? Um, most of the time, so let's let's understand about broker mentality, okay? Now, I hate it when I, I talk about brokers like this because I'm going to stereotype them because not all brokers are like this, okay? But... If we understand, and I, but I will say this, most brokers are motivated by, I think, this. And we'll call it Hip Pocket National Bank, okay? My paycheck, okay? Every broker, by the way, brokers work for free until you close, right? So understand, brokers work for free until you close. And so they have a really good nose to sniff out newbies and people that cannot transact. Okay, they are trained. They are trained assassins, man. They can sniff you out quick. And so, how do you get around that? And how do you get your offers accepted? Well, remember, if you listen to last episode, which I highly recommend you do, go check out. Um, how to get deal flow, you're going to remember that I talked a lot about creating relationships, okay? And it is so vital to create a relationship with your with the brokers that, you're, that are sending you deals, okay? And you really want to uh, migrate up the ladder to you get to their short list, okay? Every broker, I'm going to have actually one of my good friends, Alon, um, or I've got another, uh, Berkadia, Alex uh, Blavojevich, and I'm going to have him on this podcast, and we're going to talk about broker mentality. And um, I know he listens to my podcast a little bit. So, Alex, if you're listening, I, I'm not trying to beat up brokers, okay? But I got to be real with everybody, okay? And the, the thing is, is most brokers, um, they, they represent their clients, the sellers, right? And they want, but what they really want, at the end of the day, if we're real being honest, and I like being honest here, right? Is they're trying to make a paycheck, right? And so if you operate from integrity and um, in that place, I think you're, you can go a long way with, with brokers, right? 
because they are going to be your champion to get your deal picked above any other deal that may be higher, right? You're, you can win bids. We've won bids, not because we were the best bid, the highest bid, but because we were the best overall bid, meaning they felt like we could close. We could transact, okay? Now, transacting in this business is a big deal, okay? When you close a property, you should let every broker that you're working with know that you closed that deal because that's going to let everybody know the player, player, player is in the house, okay? So you got to let them know, man. You just got to, okay? Um, but so let's talk about the setup. So, so listen, you go on a site visit. Um, and by the way, okay, let me just back up. I want to regress for just a minute. Okay. Cause last week we talked about getting deal flow. Okay. Once you get a deal that pencils, that says it's a green light, that it's a, it's probably a deal. The next thing that you got to do is you got to go visit the dirt. You have to book a trip and fly to wherever that property's at. You're going to meet the broker. You're going to do, uh, you know, walk some units. But more importantly, what you should be doing is talking with the property manager and the maintenance person, right? And really, you're on a fact-finding mission, okay? And to make sure that you got a deal. And if you can leave uh, that, now we talk about a lot of that a lot more in my curriculum, right? Like exactly what you do on a site visit. We just did um, a... Uh, a training on that but like what you do at the site visit is critical because you're you're still going there to kill the deal right you're you're and it only if you don't kill the deal while you're there and it still pencils and you come back and inform your your financial model and it still pencils then you're ready to submit an LOI okay and there is a very uh, critical way that you do this and most people do it wrong okay most people screw it up and I'm here to, to un, to un, I want to say un F yourself so you don't do it wrong. Okay. Um, because most people do it wrong and it, it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't, you don't have to. Okay. Let's put it that way. You just don't have to. Um, so let's start off with like, first of all, just some procedural things that has to happen. So, in your LOI, your your letter of intent, that's what we give brokers, okay? We give them an LOI. And so in that LOI, that packet that you're gonna submit, okay? You're going to have your actual, your, your letter, letter of intent, and it should only be two pages. If your LOI is more than two pages, it's too freaking complicated, okay? And a confused mind says what? No. Okay, do not make your LOI complicated, okay? It's a no-go. Just don't, just don't do it. You're better off that way, right? Uh, your, your, your people will like you better, right? Do not make it complicated. It should be in very plain English, not lawyer English, okay? We're going to lawyer up after they accept our LOI, but in the LOI letter of intent, we want to just be... We want to tell them exactly the main terms that we're looking for, okay? Now, very important, by the way, very important. And so I'm going to tell you, uh, and then, and so there's the LOI piece of that. But with the LOI, you should also have your management bio. Now, if you do not have a management company yet and you're looking to make an offer on a property, don't make an offer on a property, okay? Like... Don't play, <laughs> go find your team. <laughs> Don't go in this thing willy nilly, man. You can't do it that way, guys. Take the time and build your team. And if your management company doesn't have a bio, then you shouldn't be working with them because if they're worth a grain of salt, they will have a bio and a whole outline of what they do and how they operate, okay? so. In your LOI submission packet, the first thing that you're going to have is your management's bio of how, of how many units they own and operate, where they operate at, 
right? And you need to, you know, and if you're in just, if they're just a regional uh, operator, then you better have a property in that region. If you have something that's way out of the region that they don't even come close to operating for, a bank and a broker is going to check it. They're going to check that. Be like, ooh, what are they, what, you know, can they do this? Can they manage this property? Right? That's the reality, folks. That's how it really works. So you got to have, and, and so you want a really good management team. Guys, and I'm going to tell you, operations is where you make money or lose money bigly, right? You should be hip and hip with your property manager. You should be two peas in a pod. You should think alike. They, they do all the heavy lifting for you, but they should be your, truly, you're almost like your business partner, where you have really good lines of communication you understand underwriting and their guidelines and what, what their experience is, is in managing properties. You have to have that relationship, by the way. Okay. So the second thing that you should have is your bio. Okay. Your bio, right? Saying that you're a big freaking deal. Okay. Now, if you're not a big deal yet, find someone that is. Hello. This is a team sport. The problem I see with most new investors is they're not willing to partner. They get too greedy. Stop being freaking greedy. It's better to be in the game than like on the porch. Hello? Right? <laughs> most people, again, I, I see this all the time. They're like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do it. I don't want to share. Idiot. <laughs> right? Idiots. Like, listen. You know, half of nothing is nothing. So be willing to build your team. And if you don't have experience, find someone that does. I teach this in my Kahuna boardroom all the time. And I offer partnerships. But in my partnerships, um, you know, you, they don't make, you know, I give them opportunity to make a good, a good chunk of, of the business. But it's not all of it, right? I'm making all of it. Okay, I'm just going to say that's, that's how it works. Um, now, what I give is the opportunity to really learn and to build yourself so you can do your own deals. And by the way, you know, I, I kind of got lucky because I was really good at raising money, but I still had to, on my first deal, I had to have two other um, people that go in the deal with me. Why? Because they could qualify for the loan and I couldn't. Now, they ended up being idiots <laughs> and we got rid of them and, um, and, and that was a blessing. It was a pain in the butt for the first two years, but I got through it. All right, so your bio, your bio. And, and dude, when you do your bio, um, by the way, if you want to look at like what a bio looks like, um, you're going to have to go to kahunainvestments.com and you're going to have to like tell me that you want to be one of my members in my investing um, uh, to invest one of my properties. Okay, if you do that and go all the way through it and answer all the questions, um, then you will get a um, one of my bios, right? My credit, I call it my credibility kit. So you can see what my credibility kit looks like if you want to do that, okay? And and since I'm doing it, a quick plug: if you ever want to invest in one of our deals, we have a process for that. It's called our membership uh, site, uh, and you can go to kahunainvestments.com, and uh, there's a big pop up that shows up. Fill that out, go through it, and um, we will talk with you. We have a process where we want to get to know you and have a substantive relationship uh, so we can um, we then qualify you to uh, show you future deals that we'll be doing, okay? So I got that out of the way too, like there. Two birds in one, whatever that word is, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, you got to be careful, guys. I'm rattling on today, man. I'm rattling on. Woo, White Rabbit City. I like to chase them. <laughs> okay, so we have your management bio, your bio, and then you need to have a proof of funds. Proof of funds. And, um, you know, you want to get a proof of funds. And I think I believe I have an episode, and I'm not going to say which one it is, but I want to say it's one or two or three. It's in the first five episodes where I talk about proof of funds. That's the only place you'll ever hear me talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it on this podcast. Uh, it's somewhere in there. You have to you have to dig hard to find it. I'll let you try to find it. 
But I go into proof of funds on how to create a version of proof of funds for a broker, right? And it works every time, okay? And so you can get a proof of funds for whatever you need. If you don't know how, um, Google how do you get a proof of funds. Like if there's a Google Smart, you can figure out a way to provide some type of proof of funds. Or if you have, or another reason, a way to get proof of funds is to have a partner that has lots of money. Okay, in the beginning, I didn't have a lot of money. Okay, so, um, but I wanted to get my offers accepted, right? And then I eventually found my team that did have money. So that's all that I needed. Okay, and I used their financials to help solve my, uh, to get my deal. Okay, so a proof of funds. Now, those are the main three things that you're going to have and when you submit an offer. And what that does to your, um, your broker is it allows them to present you in a very favorable way because most people are just going to submit their LOI. Okay. And so when you have a submission packet and if your management company has testimonials or bio, you know, like things like anything that can, anything that can help your uh, status as listen, we're really good at what we do. Submit all of that, right? It should be like a data dump. And it's, it's, it's really saying like, here's what we do now. Now I'm going to get to what should be in your LOI. Okay. And how you structure this, because this is important. Is in your LOI, you know, you can, of course, you're going to say you're buying the property for whatever price. And uh, here's the important parts. Okay. Number one, you're going to ask for 30 business days. For your inspection period okay and it's the key word here is business business days okay i'm gonna do some business and the reason for that is because that equates to 45 calendar days right so business days is monday through friday doesn't include saturday and sunday that gives you some extra juice so it's worth the squeeze okay so and when people look at it sometimes they forget that it says business days and they just see 30 days. Okay, well, I can't help. They can't read, but we put business days. Why? Because that's the way you're supposed to do the game. Okay. Also that you're going to have, once your inspection period is over, we are going to have a 30 business days to close. Again, that's another 45 days. Okay. So now we're into, into it for 90 days. And now, by the way, here's a little secret. Again, another little secret is that this is in the LOI submission. Okay. What I don't include in my LOI that I do include in my purchase and sales agreement, my PSA, is that I always put a clause in there that I can get a 30 business day extension if I'm willing to pay between 12 and 15,000, I always put, I think we always put $12,000 and then we're always willing to negotiate up to 25 to pay for a 30 business day extension. Now they always will counter like the business days sometimes on the extension, but we are firm. And when I mean firm, we are firm on our business days inspection and truly on our business days to close because we're like guys we are not in the go fast mode business if that's what you want if speed speed kills sometimes by the way right speed can kill and so we're not trying to get killed over here we are walking with our eyes wide open okay this is my colors story and gosh dang it, you guys are going to make me tell my color story. Because this is what I see a lot of times. They're like, man, you need to close, you need to close. Who you need to close, you need to close. So the story of colors, if you guys watched the movie, great movie. But it's about a seasoned cop and a rookie cop. And, you know, he's trying to tell the difference of, you know, how the, the, the rookie cop is acting. And, and I believe this is true in lots of things in life. Where there's this little bull, young bull, and he looks at his dad, the big bull, and, and they're on top of a hill. And excuse me, ladies, for what I'm about to say. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it clean. 
But the little bull is like, Dad, Dad, Dad. Ooh, Dad, Dad. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dad, 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 Dad. Let's go run down there. Let's go get that little cow. Get the cow. And the dad looks at his son. No, son. Let's walk down there and get them all. Because that's what bulls do. Okay? And so here is a great example of Ooh, ooh, I got a deal. I got to get the steel. Oh, I got to get the steel. Gosh, man, I, I got to have the deal. I got to have the steel. Man, I'm telling you, people that do it like that, you screw yourselves, people. Do not let yourself get freaking those goggles on where you can't see anything but the shiny freaking deal, okay? And A, you owe it to your investors never to get that excited, Okay? You need to keep an even kill about yourself, okay? You cannot go and just get all crazy, googly-eyed about your deal. You just got it. You got to keep it real. And so take your time and don't ever rush. Don't ever um, be ashamed of having 30 business days to do your inspection. And one of the ways you can argue, because you're going to get pushback, I promise, you're going to get pushback in different markets. You're going to get pushback and you got to push back harder. Okay. When a broker challenges you on this, you're like, listen, Alon, right? We don't do 30 day inspections. It takes 30 business days. Okay. I have a team that comes out and we set up a command center. I have a whole list of items that I need from your seller so we can do the proper due diligence. I have a whole team of um, contractors that are going to be coming to the property. And then they're just gonna, it's going to take time for them to prepare bids because I don't want to go into this thing hoping I understand what the CapEx number is. I got to know. I owe it to my investors to do this work. Do you see that conviction in my voice, guys? I'm telling you, man, I, this is how I do it. This is, I live by this creed. I had one deal that, that was not able to pay my investors for two years. And I'm telling you, two years of sleepless nights. And I hope that you can hear it in my voice because I'm telling you, I will never have that experience again, knock on wood. I am super conservative. I keep my eyes wide open. I do not rush into deals. And you shouldn't too, okay? You shouldn't too, because you don't have to. There's plenty of deals out there for us all. I promise you. So don't get too in a hurry and be, be calm. And know that you're, you'll get your deal, right? And sometimes you'll lose some. And that's okay. I've lost deals because I didn't, I was never, I wasn't willing to go fast. And I always look at that and say, man, that's one blessing. I, that I dodged a bullet. Every time that happens, I say, man, that's probably another bullet that I dodged, right? Because by going fast and quick, you'll, you'll miss something. You'll, you'll not see something. And that could be the bullet that kills you. Okay. So keep your eyes wide open when you're doing this business and make no apologies for being slow, okay? And the other part of that is saying, listen, we may be slow, but we transact, right? Uh, if, and if and, you know, if you're new, find a good partner that has that experience, you know, that that you can say, like, listen, when we put something on a contract, we pretty much close unless it's something crazy that happens, okay? So your 30 business days inspection and 30 business days to close is a must. On your PSA, you're going to add the um, 30 days extension and you're going to pay between twelve dollars and $15,000 to get it. And you'll get that every time too, by the way. Don't ever let your lawyer um, not put it in there, okay? Now, the other thing is I'm usually going to have about $100,000 in earnest money. Now, some people will say, oh, Corey, but is that enough? Listen, I've put $100,000 down on $10 million properties, okay? 
twelve point seven. I put a hundred thousand dollars. Now, now you're going to follow me through this process because it's going to end up on a on a big deal like that. It'll end up being two hundred, but on a medium size deal up to five million, it'll be one fifty. Okay, so follow follow me all the way to the end here, and I'll, I'll make this make sense. I'll land the plane. I promise. Okay. Now, so that's the earnest money part. You're going to put a hundred thousand dollars every time in earnest money. Okay. And then you're going to have, you're going to list all the due diligence items that are needed to do a deal, right? And now this is something that where most people, they, they, I feel like they screw this up a lot as well. And I'm going to actually open up, I'm going to go into one of my deals real quick and just open up my LOI. And I'm going to read a little bit of what we have as far as the items that we require, right? Because, you know, we want to make sure that we get our deals. And so, again, you know, we usually just have our, um, go to the list here. I'm just going to read it off to you. <clears throat> These are things, so we're just going to say the purchaser's performance is conditioned upon the purchaser's approval of the following. If seller is a lender that has acquired the property through foreclosure and deal yeah, yada, yeah, so that's boilerplate, right? So here's what we need. We want your tenant leases and rental agreements, right? Physical, on-site, and digital. We want all existing vendor services and personnel contracts to include, and that's like everything, right? We want your trailing three years certified, keyword, certified operating statements to include detail of cost of major repairs. We want a current rent roll, tenant ledgers, and accounts receivable reports. We want detailed of current applicant screening criteria and a trailing 12 month of acceptance rate. We want up to date trailing 12s of income expenses, up to date trailing 12 account receivables. That's like in a monthly as they, as we are going through um, the whole process of buying. We want a budgeted forecast of for major repairs. We want the current properties balance sheet. We want a trailing 12 month turnover and lease concession matrix. We want the trailing 12 uh, months mechanical contractor expense report with contact information. We want a tra trailing three years of real estate tax bills and tax paid receipts. We want a detailed of a current real estate tax appeal and contact information of appeal service provider. We want a detail of current staffing and payroll expenses. We want inventory of all personal property on premises used to maintain and stored for property. We, ought to, we want an inventory of all furniture, appliances, and computer network equipment on the property. We want copies of the trailing 36 months, that's three years, utility bills. We want a schedule and description of all current and pending litigation relating to the property. We want copies of all the required local permits, the termite bonds, certificates of occupancy, and your operating memorandum, okay? I'm sorry, uh, O&M, errors and uh, emissions, right? We want copies of all existing structural, roof, mechanical inspectors, or contractor reports. We want your current landlord, tenant log, council contact information. We want details of any neighborhood association memberships or, or uh, requirements. Okay. We want the property website service, the hosting provider, and login information. We want the site plan. We want water and gas shutoff map. We want unit type floor plans. We want the most recent survey. We want the most recent environmental report. We want the most recent appraisals. And we want the most recent termite pest control. We want uh, the construction as built plans. We want three years of tax returns, form 8825. We want three years of operating account bank statements. Hello, we're gonna ask for their bank statements. And we want three years of insurance loss history, okay? Guys, that is it. That's that's a lot of information, okay? And, you know, that's what it requires. By the way, just so you know, our, our contract, and the wording is two pages, um, then the next four pages or three or four pages, or no, it's three pages, is all the things that we want in our exhibits, right? Exhibit A1. And that's all the things I just listed out. That's another two pages. So it's a total of four. My bad. 
total of four, okay? And so, like, that's what we're looking for. That's a lot of information, by the way, okay? But we put it up there up front, and then we want to make them sign off for it. Well, why do we want to make sure they sign off on it? And by the way, our inspection period doesn't start until we have signed off saying that they have given us all the information. Okay, that's, that's very, very important. You got to make sure that's in your purchase and sales agreement, not in your LOI. But when you do your purchase and sales agreement, your due diligence does not start until they have given you everything and then they request your signature that's saying that you've re, uh, you have confirmed that they have sent everything everything needed. Now we do not ask for this, by the way. We make them request it because that's their job. That's what it says in our contract, and we are very adamant about that because we could go into way down the road and all of a sudden they're like, "Well, hey, you guys are supposed to close," and we're like, "Hey, listen, you've never sent us the document uh, needing to certify our due diligence." And guess what? The clock's not even started. Now, is that sneaky or what, right? Listen, we're playing the game to win, not to lose, okay? Now, all that kind of nitty-gritty stuff, that is not in your LOI, okay? I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself here a little bit. That is not in the LOI, but that's stuff that you got to have when you do get your purchase and sales contract, okay? I'm giving you guys bonus stuff right now, okay? All right. So now we have all the stuff we need. We have our, let's, let's just kind of break it back down and what we have, right? We have our management bio, your bio, a proof of funds. You've got a good little LOI. It provides all the things that you're looking for, right? Now here's where the magic comes in, okay? This is how you get your deals accepted for the most point. So you, you have a good contract, a good offer. You have a good packet built. Now, Hopefully you were paying attention to our last episode and you created a relationship with your broker because you want these brokers to actually like you. And so usually when a broker has a property, he has what's called a call for offers. Okay. This is saying that he's going to ask every investor that um, he thinks is going to invest, hey, submit your offer on this day, like on Friday, Friday by 5 p.m. So Friday morning, you are going to call the broker and you're going to ask for these magic words. John, I get ready to submit an offer and I need some pricing guidance. Okay. And you're also, cause this is, cause you want to be invited to the best and final, the best and final is where all, that's where you're going to, you're going to win the bid. Okay. And so you say, John, listen, I'm going to submit an LOI. I'm just telling you right now, it's probably not going to be the strongest offer. But I want to make sure that I'm going to make it to your best and final because we can sharpen our pencil. Okay, we've got a little dry powder. And so can you give me some pricing guidance to make sure that I'm, that I'm in, in the running to your best and final? And you might have to play hot and cold with them, right? Um, but if you've got a relationship with John the broker, you're going to have a hell of a lot better chance in getting this done. Okay. And that means everything. It absolutely means everything. Okay. That's, I mean, that's how you win in the business. Okay. So it's, and that's relationships, by the way. Okay. It's crazy relationships that, and, and good relationships that will, and, and I know this for a fact, my buddy, Alex Blavojevich, right? We bought uh, Eagle Village and we had a good, good conversation. We started talking about, um, Harleys and, and riding and, and, and stuff and he's watched some of my videos and we were just laughing about my Christmas video and um, By the way, and then he called me When I had my next deal uh, the Dick's next deal that he sold me was uh, Hawkeye Towers And so like this stuff guys this stuff really works relationships, I mean relationships work and so Pricing guidance. Pricing guidance is what the words that you'll use to help try to figure out if you're hot or cold. And then you're going to submit your LOI. And when you submit that packet, it's a beautiful packet. Okay. Now, here's what's going to happen is, you know, a couple days later, they're going to say, hey, guess what? Uh, you, you made it for the best and final. Well, congratulations. Like, no doubt. No duh. Right? 
Like I'm expecting to be in the best of the final. But it's it's like the way they always send like a template or email. Congratulations, you've made it to the best and final. <laughs> you know, and so okay, great, yeah, I'm excited, I, uh, whatever, right? Um, here's what I do now. So now here's I put my finishing touches on my deal. Typically, we'll reserve maybe fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. Maybe a hundred thousand dollars more difference in price change. Okay, really not that much. Hundred, uh, one hundred fifty would be really going above and beyond. Okay, and then we'll always usually put if it's a ten th ten million dollar deal, we're going to put an additional hundred thousand dollars in earnest money. So we're going to we're going to str strengthen our earnest money up to get into the deal. If it's like a five million dollar property, I'm going to put like another fifty thousand. Right, so one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in earnest money. In my mind, that that seems to get it. But other than that, that's really pretty much all we are going to do to change. Now, we are still going to call John the broker because he just say, "Hey, you're you've won. You're invited to the best and final, and offers are due for best and final next Friday." So, and then they'll usually ask you to fill out some more crap. Okay, like. Who are you? They, I don't know. It's like a stupid questionnaire. And so fill out the stupid questionnaire they give you if they give you one. Um, and, and don't just fill it out. Make it look great. Right? Make it anything. You, if they give you something, make it look great. Not just good, but great. If you don't know how to write, find someone that can. not Okay? Make yourself look very professional. High quality. Top of the line. Right? Big words. Your big boy words. Okay, not country grammar like Corey talks it on this podcast. Okay, <laughs> you're going to use your professional, you're going to put your professional hat on, not your tactical, right? By the way, I'm in my, if you're watching this on video, I'm in my tactical outfit because we had a tactical meeting this morning with my team about how we're going to kill it uh, this year in raising private money. Okay, and we had some strategies and, and tips and tricks and things that we're going to do. Right, and I was giving them their marching orders. It's a lot of fun. Um, so, but on that best and final day, you're gonna call them again. You're gonna, you're gonna ask for what? What are you gonna ask for? You know it. Say it. Say it. Pricing guidance, John. Man, and and here's the trick. You were gonna tell John the broker that John, listen, I want this deal. Okay. Most people are afraid to say I want it. Tell the broker, I want it. You, I want this deal. I want to buy. I want to transact. This is my deal. Take ownership of it. Man, they will hear that conviction in your voice. Okay? Let them know. I, I, I always say, like, at the end of the day, one of the things I'm really good at is letting people and reading people. They understand it. They need to, they need to hear this, by the way. You know, oh, no, well, you know, we, we'd like to get this deal. We'd like to get, you know, we'd like to. That, that doesn't cut it, guys. John, I want this deal. Okay, I want to win this bid, right? And I need some pricing guidance because I may not be the highest price. And, you know, you're going to try to find the buttons, you know. Is it surety or close? Because if it's surety or close, I believe I'm the right price. Can you get, you know, what's... What do you think it's going to take to get this property tra to transact? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to put it down there, okay? But you're going to get the price from him. And like that, that means everything, right? That, that really is everything that you need, right? To get that LOI accepted because I'm telling you, man, it makes a difference when you get a deal. It really does. And it only takes one deal, right? How many? One, one freaking apartment deal can change your life forever. And so, you know, use the, take, take everything that I've talked about today and use it, right? Do not sit on it, use it. Call for offers, pricing guidance, best and final, ask for pricing guidance. And guys, you will win more than you'll lose, okay? Now you're going to lose a lot. That's just the nature of the beast, okay? And I've always been willing to lose, okay? Always. 
I've all, and, and if you don't win the bid, you call John the broker up and you say, John, listen, I'm sitting here, buddy. I'm waiting. I want this deal. When this thing blows up because guy can't do it, I want you to remember that I told you so, and I want you to call me. I want you to call me. I'm embedding commands to John the broker. John, if that doesn't go, I want you to pick up the phone and I want you to call me. I'm here. I want to do this deal. Man, that's, that's the kind of um, mental attitude, in my opinion, that it takes to let people know that you're serious and, and, and then you'll get a second chance if the deal does blow up. And a lot of times they do, guys. A lot of times they do. And so, but the main thing is to have a, a relationship because then that broker, because here's what the broker will do. If he had two similar offers that were that not much uh, difference in price, but he believed in you and your offer and your ability and your team and you had everything else lined up, you will win. You will win that offer because you have beefed it up. You've shown beyond a doubt that you are a professional. And being a professional in this business, it is a small world, okay? And it means a lot, okay? I will never teach you to go fast. I will never teach you to do unethical things. I will teach you to go slow and steady and win the race. Because it's a game and, and, and it's a great game, but you gotta play it the right way. And playing it the right way is everything, guys. Guys, I hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. Listen, I, 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 I love doing these things. I absolutely love it. Take the time if you can. Go to iTunes. Tell me what you think of this podcast. I appreciate anything that you have to say. Good, bad, or indifferent. I don't care. But just get out there and, and, and toot your horn a little bit. Let me hear from you. It means a lot. Um, guys, this game of, of real estate multifamily investing, it is... For me, the the craziest thing that's ever happened to my life. I've, I mean, listen, I've always wanted to be successful all my life, all my life. You know, and I started from nothing. And, you know, I always felt like I had to be a Tommy Topper. I had to, I had to like, you know, if you went to the lake, I went to a bigger lake or, or whatever. Because I always felt inadequate. I always felt like I had to prove something. And, um, you know, I look back at my life now and I look at what I, what I, what I'm doing what I've done and you know I no longer have to try to brag and I don't, I don't I don't feel the need to have to say I am right I'm trying to live this in front of you guys just so you can I'm opening up my heart so you can see like that I'm real and that I believe in this I believe in this thing called multifamily investing I believe that it would change your life I believe that it would change your life as it's changed mine and allows me to have a life that, that I never thought or dreamt possible. And there's something about having money come in each and every month for work that I don't do. That is called cash flow. Remember that cash flow? It's sexy. <laughs> Guys, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Your paradise is possible.